So in order to find the mistake, we have to remember that all these conditions that we have in this code, checking if the month is February, if the month is between Jan to July, etc., all of these happen sequentially. And while looking at the code, we might feel that all the conditions are uh, being examined, the order in which they are being examined matters. So let's read this very carefully. This is talking about February and we know that the details there are okay. This is talking about month being less than or equal to 7 and the person who wrote this code put this comment because in their mind they're thinking months Jan to July. But is this comment really the same as this condition? Remember that when we get to line 18, the only thing we know, the only thing we know is that the month is not equal to 2. It could be much bigger than 2. It could be much smaller than 2. It's not equal to 2. This is now checking if month is less than or equal to 7. So this will include months that are much less than 2, such as 0. And even in those cases, this will apply the formula because this condition will be true for the month 0. Now we were trying to handle the case when month was illegal down here. But the point is, since month equals 0, satisfies the condition on line 18, we will go into the if condition and we will return a value and we will be out of the function. We will never get to the code at the bottom which is supposed to deal with illegal months like 0. So the way we can refute this code is by setting the month to be some illegal value, something like 0. So let's try it with 0. Now, should we care if it's a leap year or not? It turns out it doesn't matter. You can set is leap to true or is leap to false. Both of those would work. And the expected answer as per the doc string is 0. Because we have said if the month is not between 1 and 12, we want the answer to be 0. So we have to write the expected answer as 0. Now what actually happens? What does this code actually do when the month is 0? Let's trace it through. So if the month is 0, this condition is not true. We skip past it and we come to line 18. This condition is true. 0 is less than or equal to 7. So now we have to return this expression. To calculate this expression, let's first calculate what's in the brackets. Month is 0. 0 remainder 2 is 0. So this is going to return 30. So this piece of code is going to uh, report that month 0, which is illegal, has 30 days. And that's why this code is buggy. So when we click on that, we get our success message. Now we could have got our success message whether this was a leap year or not. And we could have got our success message not just with month 0 but even negative years because those are also integers but they don't fall in the range 1 to 12. What about illegal months like 13? What happens there? There again, the expected answer is 0 whether the year is a leap year or not because month 13 doesn't exist. Perhaps we believe this function will return the value uh, 30 over there or perhaps 31. But if you try it with either 30 or 31, you will find that this function does not return the value 30. In fact, this function returns the correct answer 0 when the month is more than 12. And the reason it returns the correct answer, this is not a counterexample, the reason it returns the correct answer there is that if the month is more than 12, this condition is not true, and this condition is not true, and this condition is not true. 
So the condition that actually ends up being true is this one. The month is more than 12 and there we correctly return 0. So I hope this example helped you see how important it is not to just blindly trust the code as it's written. Comments are meant to help you understand what's going on. But remember, comments are written by humans or sometimes by AI and they may not actually correspond to what the code is doing. There can be a mismatch. So just because the code looks right, beautifully commented, wonderful variable names, we should not trust it. There can be tricky issues. I'm not creating these problems merely to confuse you. I'm creating these problems because I know the code you will see out there in the real world, whether it is human written or AI generated, it might contain these kinds of mistakes. So I want you to practice with refute problems.